Good evening, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 25th, 2022, quote on 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about this evening, including tropical storm Ian now beginning to rapidly intensify in the Caribbean, potential for significant impacts to the western part of Cuba and Florida, so it's going to jump strength everything. Taking a while to across the tropical Atlantic as the sun begins to set, we notice that we have tropical storm Ian now to the south and east of the Cayman Islands. This is moving off towards kind of the west-northwest and will be impacting portions of the western tip of Cuba and the Cayman Islands over the next few days. If you look at the zoomed-in visible satellite this evening, we notice that the storm structure has remained eh, today. It's not really been the best. However, we notice at the end of the run, we actually do have some pretty deep convection that has begun to develop over top of the circulation and this is likely the beginning period of the rapid intensification that was delayed from yesterday. We noticed that uh, most of the forecast guidance from last night had a major or near major hurricane status at this point. Obviously, that's not happening. However, if we look at the recon plane, we do notice that the pressures have actually fallen very substantially down to 992 millibars. And so we are dealing now with a circulation that is very well defined, very compact, and is now going to go on to rapidly intensify. And so we are now starting that phase. Obviously, the wind field has yet to respond. Obviously, we need deeper convection to be able to bring the winds aloft down to the surface. However, the low pressure at 992, this suggests that the rapid intensif intensification phase has begun. You don't really need significant convection to lower the pressures, but you do need that deep convection to bring those winds and mix them down to the surface, which we have yet to see. But obviously, IAN is beginning to rapidly intensify this evening. Now, looking at the latest track forecast here, we also noticed something real quickly here. Notice the location at 5 p.m. was 16.2 north. And the recon plane is now located, or the center here was located around north of 16.5. So this has actually taken a little bit of a northward jog in the past few hours. And this is actually uh, something that could affect the track a little bit going forward. But again, looking at the forecast here again, this is a tropical storm expected to rapidly intensify. It's doing so already. Hurricane warning for the Cayman Islands, hurricane warning for the western tip of Cuba. And newly as of 5 p.m., we have a tropical storm watch for portions of the Florida Keys. Now, this track forecast remains uh, with this system becoming a Category 4 sometime on Wednesday, turning towards the northeast and bringing it in the Florida Big Bend region. But as we're going to show you here in a minute, this track forecast is likely to begin shifting east closer to Tampa uh, as some of the guidance has continued to indicate a further east shift today. So with this eastward shift, uh, there is now a confidence to add a high risk of impacts across portions of the western Florida Peninsula and portions of the Big Bend region. Now, ultimately, we could still see a system that sneaks further west and does make it into the Florida Panhandle. But by all indications today, the guidance has continued to suggest more of a rightward track and more of a threat for portions of Tampa and some of those surrounding areas. So there is a high risk of impacts here. Basically what this entails is extremely heavy rainfall, flooding, of course the threat for tornadoes, but that storm surge issue is going to be very significant because with a track that takes it more something into here, that storm surge is going to pile up for Tampa Bay and it's also going to be pushed in portions of Cedar Key in the Florida Big Bend region. Uh, obviously, then surrounding that, we have that significant risk. So the potential for tropical, prolonged tropical storm force winds, prolonged heavy rainfall, and that tornado threat. And then, of course, surrounding that is an elevated risk with some wind, some rain, and maybe an isolated tornado or two threat. So that's kind of the indications that we're getting right now. And the confidence continues to grow on a more easterly solution today. Now, if we look at the H4 forecast, this is from 12Z. So this is uh, before... Uh, but we'll show you the latest runs here in a minute. But this is the 12Z upper air environment. So we're looking at about 200 millibars or 39,000 feet roughly. We notice that this evening the storm is dealing with healthy anticyclonic flow here. So we've got this uh, very impressive outflow channel beginning to set up. And that is leading and contributing to surface pressure falls. And this will again continue to allow the storm to intensify very significantly. And of course, on this particular run here of the H wharf, this becomes a major hurricane near the western tip of Cuba and then carries it into the Gulf. 
And as we were talking about in earlier today's video, we noticed that the position of Ian is, or Ian rather, is going to matter here very significantly in terms of what impacts and, and how quick it will weaken or strengthen. Now in the Southern Gulf, this uh, allows Ian to actually intensify because it's a favorable jet interaction. But if we look here on this particular run of the H wharf, uh, as we start to get the southern jet stream here to amplify and move quicker towards that trough in the northeast, we notice that the shear increases out of the southwest to almost about 40 knots in some cases. Uh, but if we back this up here and we move this forward, now the position of Ian is actually going to matter very significantly because if you have a track that's closer here to southwest Florida and this area tracking along like that, this actually puts it in a little bit more of an optimal position to intensify and so if we go back to the 18Z runs here, so this is the newer runs that are coming in. Uh, this is valid for 8 p.m. this evening. Now the H wharf still initializes a little bit too weak. However, we notice that again, this becomes still a major hurricane, 954 millibars south or moving through portions of uh, the western part of the Cuba, crosses into the Gulf of Mexico and then begins to rapidly, you know, intensify once again before facing that shear. And so we get a storm that ends up, again, very close to the Tampa Bay area and somewhat stalling, almost like the GFS. But notice, I mean, this is a very significant shift towards the east here in the latest runs. And if we actually look at the radar, simulated radar here, we notice that there's a lot of heavy rainfall being pushed into Tampa and even a very significant or potentially a significant tornado threat shaping up for the entire Florida Peninsula uh, due to the shear uh, of the tropical cyclone and the increased shear that we're going to be feeling in the upper levels from that uh, trough interaction or that, that jet interaction to the south. So this could be a very significant situation. And if we look at the HMON, properly initialized at 992 millibars, again, deepens this 937 millibars by the time it gets to the western part of the uh, Cuba there and crosses in. And again, this too would be an increased threat for Tampa Bay. And you can see how far toward the northeast and actually is. Now, yes, in this particular run here, we're dealing with a weaker solution, uh, but you know, some indications are that this could even go further east than this and potentially be more of a threat uh, to Tampa because right now that's only sitting about 111 miles offshore. And we notice that again, uh, the models continue to indicate that this may make a bend towards the Northwest. But again, something uh, to note here is again, you know, some of these models like the H wharf do follow the GFS grid which does carry it northwest after, after kind of skirting Florida. Uh, but we notice here again, one thing to watch is this trough interaction off towards the north. Uh, what ends up happening on the GFS here, we notice that we move this 72 hours from now, it has consistently been stronger and a deeper uh, trough in recent runs. And that has allowed for our storm, which is already a little bit further north in recent hours and days from what we were expecting maybe compared to yesterday afternoon, this is a little bit different and now allowing for a system to be pulled further northeastward closer to Florida. Now, ultimately, this trough does weaken and move out of here and our storm is a little bit too far west still uh, to feel that capture out to sea and it kind of turns it away and moves it up, kind of skirting the western part of the Florida Peninsula and then moving it into the Big Bend region at an eventual landfall before rapidly weakening and transitioning to a post-tropical cyclone. So the Super Ensemble blends today, this is 139 different members here. And notice that again, most of the ensemble guidance continues with that. We've seen an overall uh, tighter, more Northeasterly clustered system today uh, on the ensembles. Uh, and then this is where things get tricky. Potential Florida impacts. Again, we've seen that consolidation much further towards the North and East. We've seen that spread decrease and so there's an overall higher confidence that we are going to be dealing with a storm much closer to the Tampa Bay vicinity uh, than we were talking about yesterday. Now, ultimately, if our storm still stays offshore, this isn't going to matter too much in terms of bringing the hurricane force wind field uh, inland. We notice that the 10 meter winds here still remain uh, with those hurricane, the core of the hurricane conditions would be well offshore but you would still have tropical storm force winds uh, and especially in gusts that would extend well inland and those flooding issues with that heavy rainfall and those training bands with time. Uh, but we notice at some point that will begin to weaken uh, as we get that dry air coming up on the eastern and southern sides. So eventually 
uh, this would you know kind of lead to the south and east weighted uh, being more towards the north and northwest as that dryer continues to come around now ultimately as of the 5 p.m outlook from nhc we do have a pretty substantial risk for um, tropical storm force conditions in tampa 74 percent chance of seeing tropical storm force winds in tampa proper and this will likely only increase as we go through the evening and into tomorrow and then the potential for tropical storm force winds in orlando as well now under the gun for a 40 percent chance of tropical storm force winds which was increased from about 33 percent uh, in the uh, 11 a.m discussion and outlook so we've certainly seen an eastward weighted system today more trending towards the north and east ultimately it remains to be seen if we will get an eventual landfall if we look at the european forecast again it forecasts a hurricane landfall near tampa bay before kind of curving it up the peninsula uh, and then into portions of the southeast u.s this remains a possibility of course some of the other models like the, the uh, cmc and uh, icon forecasts all indicate a florida landfall uh, florida peninsula landfall near tampa but of course We'll have to see if these models stop that shift towards the east or if they continue going and more so putting Tampa under the gun for direct hurricane impacts. It remains to be seen, but we still have a little bit to go. However, of course, uh, you are now, of course, in a higher threat talking to Tampa, Orlando, Melbourne, Jacksonville people, Cedar Key. Now these areas are under a higher risk for potential hurricane impacts over the next couple of days. Make sure you have your hurricane preparedness plans ready. Of course, I'll be keeping you up to date. I do plan to chase the storm. It will be live streamed. So lots to look forward to over the next couple of days. But continue to have your hurricane preparedness plans ready and continue to check with your local officials. Of course, if you live in an evacuation zone, make sure you understand your evacuation zones and really talk things over tomorrow. Tomorrow is the day where you need to have those evacuation plans ready to go. And then that way on Tuesday... You know, maybe uh, even, you know, tomorrow night into Tuesday evacuations, you know, can be done if you feel like it is necessary or mandatory are issued. So just something to pay attention to. All right. So that being said, I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll be talking to you guys again some more tomorrow.